Hi, this is Fred Green, host of the Golf Smarter Podcast. Over the next couple of months on our Friday episodes that retrieve the greatest hits from our archives, we're going to feature some of our many conversations with Tony Manzoni. Tony was an amazing golf instructor who passed away in 2018, and we first met him in 2010. And every time he was featured on the podcast with us, emails flooded in from golfers around the world with more positive feedback than any other teacher we've featured. So unless you're new to Golf Smarter or didn't play at College of the Desert anytime between the 1980s and the 2000s, you've probably never heard of Tony because we were the only media outlet to really pay attention to him. We've been replaying these episodes the last few years, and I still get emails today reporting on how well you've connected and improved using Tony's teaching methods. Tony's book, The Lost Fundamental, One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever, which was out of print when he passed away, is once again available on Amazon, including the Kindle format. Tony's video of the same name was also out of circulation when he passed, but can now be seen online. If you'd like to gain access, please write directly to me, golfsmarterpodcast at gmail.com, or click on the Hey Fred button at golfsmarter.com. Lastly, after he passed, we created a Tony Manzoni Memorial Golf Smarter Fund to benefit the first tee of Coachella Valley, which is where Tony lived for decades. Your tax-deductible contributions are greatly appreciated. You can find out more at golfsmarter.com slash Tony. We hope you enjoyed the journey and know that even if you've heard these episodes before, you're going to learn something new. We're going to start with the first time we met Tony back in October of 2010 and Golf Smarter episode 251. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy. The Single Pivot Swing. Ben Hogan's secret revealed? This is Golf Smarter. Sharing tips and insights from golfers and golf professionals to help lower your score. It's worked for your host, Fred Green. Welcome, and thanks for downloading the Golf Smarter podcast. Our guest today is Tony Manzoni, a very interesting man with a fascinating career that includes tour player, instructor, college coach, contributing author, and co-founder of Callaway? Impressive. He'll provide us with all the details on that, but most interestingly of all, based on years of research and modifications, he's unleashed the single pivot swing, which may be the secret to Ben Hogan's amazing ball striking ability. Let's find out more, shall we? Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Tony. Hi, Fred. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you've got an illustrious history in the golf world, and I'm really intrigued about talking to you about where you started and where you are today. You really have done a lot of different things in golf, haven't you? Well, I have. Um, you know, I started my career uh, in, in the Chicago area, well, near Chicago, in Wisconsin, about 50 miles from Chicago at Nipperson Country Club. And I, you know, kind of made my bones there and went into the service, came back and uh, worked for uh, worked at Alameda Country Club in San Jose, where I lived. Uh, and from that point, uh, Ken Venturi, who I knew very well. So wait, you're uh, talking asked, Almaden, Almaden Country Club in, in Northern California? Yes. In the same, okay, that Almaden. All right, because all of a sudden yeah. you were in Wisconsin and now you're in San, in San Jose. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I, I moved, we moved to, uh, to California, moved to San Jose because okay. uh, I was Chicago born. Right. And uh, got, a work, I got a job at Almaden and uh, played pretty good golf uh, and turned professional, obviously. Uh, made, some, you know, made some good scores. I, I think I still have the record there at 61 at Almaden. Uh, met Ken Venturi. Uh, Played in a few events with him. Uh, he talked me into coming into the desert, uh, the Palm Desert area. There was a new golf course called Mission Hills opening up. Sure. And I worked for Ken as the head professional. He was director of golf, but primarily he was with CBS, so we saw him once a month. Um, during that period of time, I got an idea because I was training a lot of uh, LPGA gals, and one of them was Sally Little. Um, and I got an idea about playing the mixed team championship where we wanted to play men against women, giving the ladies a distance um, margin. As it turned out, it turned out to be the mixed team championship. Uh, JC Penney's uh, was, was the, uh, the group that 
uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that, that they sponsored it, and that was for about 16 years on ABC. Um, and from that point in time, uh, I was very interested in golf club design, and I got together with a fellow by the name of Richard Parenti and Dick Delacruz, and we started a company called Hickory Stick. Um, and we were selling a lot of clubs, but we didn't have the capital uh, to 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 cover the orders. Um, a fellow by the name of Ely Calloway was a member at the Vintage, where I had sold a 130 for. Uh, one of their golf expos there, and uh, he liked the club. I made a cold call to him and talked him into investing in the company, which he did. And my Wow, that's Rich- like the best call you ever made. Best call, yeah. <laughs> oh, my one gosh. One of the great cold calls of all time, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. So, I wish it was so, that easy. You know, uh, I talked him into putting his name on the uh, – we, we started out as Callaway Hickory Stick Golf Club, and then it went from Callaway Hickory Stick to Callaway Golf uh, and, and the, the company ended up set, settling uh, in the Carlsbad area, where, where, which is the heartbeat of all the golf club companies. And um, from then we went public. And during that period of time, uh, I decided um, I wanted to go in a little different direction. Uh, so I had a hunk of money. I didn't want to retire. And when I heard that the College of the Desert was thinking about a golf academy, and they had about a 25-acre piece of land and, and no funding. Uh, so through friends of mine and the help of Greg Norman and a few people that I knew in the industry, we built a golf driving range, a building, and a classroom, and it houses a golf management program. And I I had intended to do this for two or three years, get it started, and let it flourish. And the crazy part about it, this is my 25th year. I became the golf coach of College of the Desert, which has been probably one of the most satisfying things I've ever done in golf. And I mean, I'm talking Callaway and mixed team championship and all that. But to work with these young kids and to change the direction in their life uh, off the golf course uh, has been the the most rewarding thing, and, it, and it's what keeps me going. Uh, mm. uh, just being around these kids, and and uh, we have a great record. We have won our conference championship uh, 23 years in a row, and we won state championship four times under my tutelage. Uh, and so that, you know, it's all good. It's all real good. And during that period of time, uh, my passion is teaching golf. I, I played at a decent level. I, I had my moments in golf, but I really, I really, uh, was too interested in going out at night and chasing skirts and drinking <laughs> a few beers. And I passed that on to my students. I said, I wasted a pretty good opportunity. So I used some of the, some of the faults in my own life, uh, as examples of what not to do. But golf has always been my passion in, in instruction. Uh, there's nothing like helping somebody with their golf game and seeing them play much better golf. Uh, that's, that's way for me, it's, it's worth more than the money that you get, get for doing it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked and stunned, dismayed here. You mean the path to enlightenment and happiness is not lower scores. It's, <laughs> it's teaching. It's sharing well, your knowledge with the, yeah, the future. Yeah, it is. It really for, for me it is. I mean, I'm sure that there are other people that won't agree with that, but for me it's been. The, I thought. <laughs> I thought if we thing. just hit lower scores, we're just going to be happy forever. Well, I'll tell you. Even when I shot 61, I still blurted out, and I didn't birdie a par five. I somebody should have come along and <laughs> slapped me in the head that time. But that's just the mindset of all of us when we play golf. We always think we could have done better. Anyway. Um, I started studying Ben Hogan because, in my mind, I don't think anyone's ever controlled the ball like Ben Hogan, um, in the past or in the present. And there's no—I mean, uh, these guys—he could give strokes the most of these guys when it comes to pure ball striking. I don't mean scoring, I don't mean putting, but I mean hitting the ball from tee to green. And a wave of, of change has occurred in the golf and uh, in, in teaching of golf. At one time, one of the commonalities of what you saw of a, of a, of a really good player was his head didn't move. And then pretty soon people start saying it's okay for your head to move and it can go anywhere it wants to go. Well, your head, is, there's a center point in the golf swing. When you set to the ball, you center yourself to it. And if you move off the ball, you've got to move back on it. So there's a lot of compensations occurring. And also I was brought up in the era where you fan the club open and close it so you, you square the club head with the rotation of the arms. But in watching Hogan, especially in his later years, and he didn't really make a lot of film available to, for people to see, I read all his books, but nothing in his books said what he did, in my estimation. Maybe grip and so forth. But he played off the left side. He played off of one axis. There's two axis points in the swing, left leg, right leg. In moving to the right leg, 
you have to make some kind of a lateral move back to the left leg and then rotate around the left leg. And that transitional move is where all the problems happen in the golf swing. And also, if you're rolling your arms or crossing your arms over, the club is going to be open a long time, close a long time, and square for just a moment. And the more you practice, the closer you can get to square more often. But there's still a lot of air involved in that swing. And you can look at all the arm swingers. I can name you uh, Phil Mickelson. I can name you uh, Tiger Woods. And I can name you Dustin Johnson. These are known names. And they hit the heck out of the ball, but they can hit it anywhere in the world. And I mean, they can hit it two fairways right. You never saw that in, in Hogan's era, okay? Part of that's moving off the ball. The second part is that Hogan learned to square the golf club with his body rotation. So he connected the arm as he took it back across the chest and then rotated the body to square it. Now the club has to stay square for a real long time. And there is that's, to me is the secret of hitting the ball properly. You, use, you put very little side spin on the ball, so your shot dispersion, you're always going to push it, you're always going to pull it. That's just golf. But you, you won't pull it with a hook or, or side spin. You won't push it with a slice, so your, your dispersion gets very narrow. And by rotating your body, instead of tilting down and under, where you, that's where all the spine problems and back problems happen. When you rotate your body, uh, you can rotate to where your right, right shoulder points to the target and your chest is left the target. Now, I have an 86-year-old man that I teach. I've got a lot of um, people from the vintage and El Dorado, which are really fine clubs, probably the best in the desert, and they come to me for golf instruction because they like what I'm teaching, and they can hit the ball more solid more often because, again, we're not, we don't have any compensations in the motion. We, we brace up against the left side, rotate the body, and rotate back the other way. Don't have to make a lateral move. Don't have to turn the hands over and time anything. We just rotate the body. We trap the club on the, le- on the left arm on the chest. So it's a really easy way to play. Well, during this period, uh, Al Barco, an, a noted writer, uh, interviewed me and you know i'm you know i'm nobody i'm a guy at a driving range oh uh, I, he, no he not li- really but yeah. well he liked what i had to say and uh, he put about an eight pager in golf illustrated magazine and the response was overwhelming i got calls from all over about people wanting telling me well i was trying stack until i couldn't do that uh and this really helped me and my back doesn't hurt and blah 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 uh I talked with the editor of uh, Golf Illustrated, and he said, would you like to have a Golf Illustrated single pivot golf school? And that's what's going to happen in December, College of the Desert. I've got Al Guyberger, who has followed this process, likes the, uh, teaches now and plays this way. Uh, i got his son, um, Brian, who's a very, very fine player, uh, a, a good instructor from Canada by the name of Mike Lyons and myself. And we're going to put together a, a hell of a golf school and when people walk out of that school, they're going to know why they hit it right, hit it left. And when the ball spins, they'll know exactly what, they'll know a, a simple move to stop it from spinning. And they're going to be able to hit the ball farther than they've had, they've done in their life. And I don't care if they're a young player thinking about the tour or an old guy that's played and he can't get off his right side anymore. He spins out and slices everything. We'll fix all that. And it's, and it's not complicated. I've never believed that the golf swing was rocket science, but I did know that Ben Hogan knew something that other people didn't. And he divulged this in other in, in subsequent books where he made phrases. He said, well, I'm going to play off my left side from now on. Lee Trevino said to me, I've never seen anybody play good off their right side, but I said a lot of great players play off their left side. But when he made that statement to me, I had no idea what he was talking about. Mm. I never realized. Because I, you, know, you never stop learning in this game. This is a school you never graduate from because there's always tweaking. There's always things that you, you can glean from other players, other teachers, and so forth. So I, I do know one thing. Tiger Woods is now being taught to play off the left side. Um, Watney just said on television in the last tournament, I had a great tip. I set up with 70% on my left side. They're all getting back to staying centered to the golf ball. It just, it, it, it's just too hard when you're moving that club as fast as these young people are moving it. It's too hard to time it with your hands and arms. You've got to trap it so that you can turn through it and eliminate the left side. And that's what this does. Uh, I, I can tell you that I, I don't care who it is that's wild with a driver, 15 minutes with them, if they're, especially if they're a good player, a tour player, let's say. 15 minutes to learn this process, they're gonna, they can hit it as hard as they want and not hit it left. Hmm. So um, it's very exciting, uh, and it's going to be really worthwhile. 
Well, that was an all-encompassing answer. You answered every single question that I didn't even get to ask <laughs> in your first well, answer. I but can I go need... into detail more than well, that. Well, that's but what I, I want to do. I'm going to want to go into details, but I do need to break for just a moment because... Tony, thanks so much for waiting. And let's get back to, um, I don't even know where to go here. I, I do wanted to ask you about working at the College of the Desert before we go back into your, your golf school. Cause I, and then, of course, the single pivot swing. But um, is the, the uh, College of the Desert, do you cover more than just golf instruction? I mean, there's so many kids today who, who may not, uh, be good enough to you know get up to the tour, but they love golf so much that they would like to be involved in the golf industry. Does your program uh, facilitate that? Uh, absolutely. We have a golf management program, oh, and we, we take the kids through uh, turf grass management, golf shop operations, methods of teaching golf, fundamentals and rules of golf, public speaking, uh, marketing classes. Uh, you know, it, it has a business aspect to it. It has a general education aspect to it. And then it has core training aspect to it, which is the core, co- core courses like uh, golf shop operations or methods of teaching golf. So when a student comes out of this two-year program uh, with an AA degree, um, they they can get into the industry and they get into middle management very quickly. Uh, for instance, in this valley, uh, I've got nine uh, uh, head professionals that have come out of this program. Uh, one of my one of my uh, students has been in China for 15 years, and in fact, I'm leaving the 18th of uh, next month to go to China because uh, we're going to create a linkage. Uh, of Chinese students coming to College of the Desert and, and taking accelerated programs. And at the same time, they're interested in maybe me setting up some golf schools in China. So I'm very ex- excited about that. But the college program is really a, a terrific program. Uh, you know, the PGA of America has uh, these IGM programs, and there are, it's, a, it's a five-year commitment. Um, I kind of like what we do and what the San Diego Career Colleges do. Uh, you get in and get out two years, and you, and, and you, you certainly have uh, – you're, you're not going to be an expert, and, and no one is coming out of these programs because you have to have the hands-on. But that two-year commitment, you can get right out into industry and, and get going. Yes, uh, and and uh, do, you is, golf, do you have a golf team as well? Oh, we have a great golf team. We have a great golf team. Uh, uh, I've been coached for, uh, I believe it's now going on 19 years, and we've won our conference every year. The previous coach, who was a terrific coach, we had w- had won it a few more years. So we're, we're at the 23rd year in a row right now. Uh, and uh, under, under my coaching, I've won four state championships and a, a number of uh, uh, what they call regional t- uh, tournaments. Um uh, it's been it's been just great working with young people. First of all, they all hit it over 300 yards. It's it's, it's crazy. I mean, I feel like putting on a calf at a dress when I play with the boys. So I finally <laughs> said, okay, from now on, I'm up in the up tees. I swallowed my pride because at one time I could pop it pretty far, but uh, it's just crazy how far they hit it now. And uh, but the, the problem is is that they can hit it anywhere far. And so we try to get them to understand how they have to manage themselves on the golf course. And of course, anger is one of the things that um, comes along with the game. Uh, And you you have to have a little fire in your belly to be a competitor, obviously, but you can't let it affect you to the point where it affects your next group of shots. And I, being Italian, uh, struggled with that uh, (laughs) up until (laughs) last week. Uh, (laughs) But but anyway. You uh, mean you would have shot a 60 that day. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do try to, uh, uh, to talk to b- the boys, you know, in all honesty, these are the things you can't do and can do it. You, you, you don't understand that you also disrupt other people when you're angry at yourself. Uh, it makes people uncomfortable around you. And it, it, it's, it's not what the game is supposed to be, but it's gotten to the point where there's so much, so much money now and, and, and all of that, all that fame that's attached to it that I think we, we've lost a little bit in the transition uh, from the from the days when guys jumped in a jalopy and dr- drove from tournament to tournament and didn't make enough money to, to stay on tour. They had to go and take club jobs, but there was something really something really pure about that period now i'm well, sure also the guys... in that period the amateur status was very uh was looked upon much differently than it is today even if yeah, no. even if you have an amateur status today i mean does that even exist 
Well, I guess it would for college players, but uh, you know, right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, there there is, but I, you know, I think that a lot of people, just like in other sports, they kind of get around it a bit. Sure. Um, but anyway, um, that's that. The, the college program is it really is uh, the reason I'm here uh, mm. more than anything else. So we've heard about stack and tilt. We've heard about single plane and and dual plane swings. Now you want mm-hmm. to talk about the single pivot swing. That's well, the there's main. just you know stack and tilt. I I I don't. I'm not going to say that they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a different a different way of looking at it. Uh, I, I'm I'm basing everything I'm talking about on what I believe. Uh, who was the best golfer, and that was Ben Hogan. And Ben Hogan in his later years played off his left side, and that just really means that he eliminated the lateral move in the golf swing. He made yeah, a, I, he need, did I, need a, I need I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I do need a better understanding, better explanation of what you mean by playing off the left side. And I'm okay. standing up you, right now, you, so... Okay, when you set up to the golf ball, mm-hmm. instead of setting up 50-50 or even 50 being the le- uh, 40 being the left side and, and, and 60 being the right, like a lot of people really tilt to the right when they're going to hit a driver cause, because they've been told if they hang back like that, they can work under and, and catch the ball on the upswing. And, sure. and, and, and that's true in, in, if you're going to rotate your hands and arms. Uh, but Hogan uh, braced up a little left. Now, he did it a little differently than I teach. When he took the club back, it looked like he was going to move to the right, but as he, as the club went back in his rotation, he set up against the left side, and I've got a zillion pictures showing that, and he set up against the left side because now he's a, against impact, and all he has to do is rotate his body. It, it, you don't lose any power, trust me. In fact, you gain power, be, and more importantly, because you can catch the ball dead square. Again, you're not moving away from the golf ball in the backswing. So uh, it, it's it's nothing new. It was done for years by a lot of players. It just wasn't talked about. And I think a lot of people misinterpret doing that. They say, well, aren't you reversing your weight shift? Aren't you? And, and, and that, that's the farthest thing from the truth. The reverse of the weight shift is when you stand up, you stand up to the ball and your hips slide underneath you and your hips go, uh, go to the right and your head is to the left. And then on the downswing, your head goes back and your, hip, and your hips go forward and you're on the right foot. That's how they're reversing the weight shift. But Staying off, of, staying on one axis, and then working around that axis is a far cry from that. And it's, uh, I, I can tell you, uh, th- there's a lot of naysayers until I have ten minutes with them, and then they, th- th- then I, then I own them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once you, once you can show them and put the club in their hand and work with them directly, I'm sure you have much different result than just trying to explain it without the visuals. Yeah, and it's not an old. And this is not an old man's thing. I've got, I've got a couple of 15 year olds that are shooting in the 60s, mm-hmm. and and they they beat that ball over 300 yards at 15 years old. Uh, and, and they and they they look at me. I got one Korean boy, and every time he hits, he looks at me. He says, "Coach, no side spin." And and I just get a big kick out of that, you know. Uh, it, it it it's it's my passion, as you can tell. I talk too much about it and too fast <laughs> about it, but I can't help myself. I can't myself. even take notes. You're talking so fast. <laughs> yeah, I can't help myself. It's it's because I'm excited about this. It's, it, it is it is a breakthrough, and there's no question about it. Fabulous. Uh, and now for for the school, how many days is the school that you're going to be putting on for your uh, there'll only be there'll only be a, it'll be a one or two day school each day six hours of instruction, uh, so it'll be a a, a one day Saturday school and a one day uh, uh, Sunday school. So a person can come to both day both schools uh, if they if they need be. But to be honest with you, uh, if we have you for six hours, uh, you're going to be able to do it, and you're going to be able to understand why you do it. We're we're going to teach you cause and effect. Uh, and that's very important for for someone. And I can promise you that I I will not have anyone that won't be hit, swinging the and we'll we'll prove it. We're going to film you in the beginning and film you in the end. You're going to see a, a tremendous change in your setup position and the way you finish. Most people never get to their left side because they're too far on the right side to ever get there. And we'll get you through the golf ball. And we won't. We're not going to say to you shift your weight. We're going to show you how to rotate your body, and that's going to make your weight shift. And you're going to be in really good balance. And you're going to hit the ball hard for the first time in a while. You know, the thing about a golf school that I've had difficulty with is that, say you get one day of instruction, or two days at best of instruction, or three or Mm -hmm. four, and you go through it and you're like, okay, I got it. Yeah, I understand what I'm doing now. 
and then you go home and you don't get a chance now that you've played three days in a row, you've got to catch up back with your life and your work and you don't get a chance to play for three weeks and you don't get a chance to practice for two weeks, whatever. And you go out there and all of a sudden it's all gone. It's, it's like, now what did they teach me again? And I find that to be a difficult part about golf schools. That you know, if I'm coming across the country, go to your school, I'm going to lose all this stuff. How do I retain it? What kind of follow up do you have to help somebody if they're like, okay, so I went to your school and I got well, it and it was great, but now I need some help. Everyone is going to get a book. Uh, is going to get a book called The Lost Fundamental, uh, which I've written, uh, and it will be out before the school starts, and it's a complete explanation. Also. Well, they will be able to talk to us via uh, via email, uh, and we can we can actually if they tell us what the ball is doing, we can tell them what they're doing. But we're not basing our instruction on timing, and that's a key that's a key issue. We're not basing that instruction on you going out and hitting 400 balls a day. We're basing it on body position. If we can show you where your body should be on the backswing and on the through swing. The rest of it is pretty easy. Once, once you connect your arms uh, or keep your arms connected to the body, and of course they're connected. I mean, it sounds almost insane to say that, but, but connection in the golf swing is different than the body being attached to the, uh, the, the arm being attached to the body. Uh, once we show them how connection occurs, and it's a very, very simple explanation with an exercise, they can do it almost instantly. And you will be able to tell by what the ball does if you're connected or disconnected. It, it, there is no question about that. In fact, a good instructor can turn his back to the student and watch the ball flight, and he can tell you physically what you did. It, it, it is so simple. So what the golf, our school will be is that this explanation over and over and over for six hours. And when, you're, uh, when you walk away from here, you're going to be able to do this. It isn't going to be a matter of you're going to lose it because we're not basing it on you having good timing that particular day. Um, so the name of your book, The Lost Fundamental, what, is there something specific that it, it is a basic fundamental that is missing for, for most people who take instruction? Well, it's, it's, it's plain centered to the ball, and I that's see. been... Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's and that's the fundamental that really is lost because uh, there's so many people teaching to move the weight all onto the right leg and then move it back all the way onto the left leg. Um, I've noticed that when I, I've taken a lesson or I've been given instruction or even going through a change, a, a swing change, that the first thing that happens to me is that all of a sudden my rhythm is all screwed up. My timing, I start speeding things up. Well, you know, rhythm is a is is a very important aspect, and you know, with the technology that's happening nowadays, uh, I met a gentleman by the name of Ted Caldwell that has invented a, a thing called Shot Watch, and it's an amazing piece of equipment because it 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 monitors your rhythm, and and I think most importantly, it monitors your grip pressure on the golf uh, handle uh, through impact, uh, which really has a lot to do with velocity. And it also monitors the time of the swing. So you can, you can take this watch, put it on, it tells the time, and you spin it around and turn it backwards on, on your uh, left hand if you're a right-handed golfer, and go ahead and pop the ball, and it's going to give you these readouts, and you can store these readouts. So a person practicing can really, really, when they hit it really well, they can look at those numbers and say, okay, that's the numbers I want to get close to. In yeah. fact, I have, Ted, I have Ted right here. I'd like uh-huh. to have... That would be great. And, and uh, you know, it's interesting because when Ted first introduced the shot watch, he came on, uh, we, we talked about it on the Golf Smarter podcast, and there were so many people that, um, so many listeners who purchased the shot watch, and I got great feedback. Uh, Ted, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Fred. Nice to talk to you again. Uh, yeah, it's great uh, talking to you. Thanks so much for uh, for coming on and, and sharing this time with Tony. Um, yes, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, uh, I was listening very carefully to what Tony was having to say uh, uh, because one of the things that we've adopted uh, at the urging of of Tony and consistent with his uh, uh, w- with his uh, single pivot idea is our grip pressure now has an added feature. Just to refresh your memory or for your first time uh, listeners that aren't familiar with Shot Watch, we have a pressure plate on the back of the watch that's very very sensitive. 
and it makes contact with the pulse point on the active arm, the left arm for a right-handed golfer. Now, when the arms rotate or the wrist moves, those tendons exert pressure against that plate, and that's what we get our grip pressure readings on. Now, in addition to, to giving a reading on the grip pressure throughout the swing plane, which is the average from from takeaway to contact with the ball, we we do a statistical operation on that uh, uh, on those grip pressure readings. There's 50 or so of them through the swing, and then we give the variation in the grip pressure. So what that tells the user is that if there's a large number for the variation, there's a lot of variation in your grip pressure through your swing, which is just the opposite of what Tony is talking about, because that means the arms are rolling over, the wrists are cocking, uh, uh, you know, the golfer is bearing down at the time he's, he's either breaking his wrists or cocking uh, or making contact with the ball. That will cause a variation in the grip pressure and Instead of, as Tony was talking about, keeping it constant throughout the swing, uh, so we've uh, we've added that feature, uh, and we think that's going to be uh, uh, very very helpful in terms of getting people to hit longer and straighter shots. We still have the other uh, swing parameters. We have the s- swing speed, where where we encourage the use of the instrument to, to uh, uh, as a swing speed workout device. Start off hitting slow swinging slowly keep maintaining balance working on the single pivot uh and gradually increasing your speed while maintaining your balance and while uh, and 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 so we you know we give a a digital readout of that speed with uh, uh one being slowest 10 being fastest so that uh like Tony's guys here uh they're off the charts they uh they they exceed what we can capture with the shot watch because as wow. as he's saying they 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 they'll whip that club around at a phenomenal rate in excess of 130 miles an hour uh, but uh, for for just us mere mortals, you know, we're going to start out. <laughs> we're going to start out. We're going to work toward getting that single pivot swing, uh, keeping everything compact, and and uh, making good contact with the ball to 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 drive it to to drive it longer. So uh, the shot watch, you've you've done a lot of work on the shot watch since it initially came out, and you've made a bunch of changes. Um, let, let's talk for a moment. Uh, clearly, the shot watch has a lot of value to someone uh, at the range to help them get a steady um, a steady pace a good rhythm mm-hmm. going but also mm-hmm. and this this new concept of grip pressure I think is really interesting because I know there are times where I find myself you know white knuckling I'm just squeezing yeah. the club in a pressure situation and you've really got to learn to control that Yes, you do, and it really does help, Fred, to have a uh, uh, to have a digital display and it represented as a real number, which you can then record, you know, in your active memory, and then on subsequent swings, say, I got to get that number, whether it's the variation in the grip pressure number or the the absolute number. I've got to, you know, I've got to get that to where uh, there there aren't these uh, spikes, you know, mm-hmm. in the in the uh, grip pressure or or a uh, large number in the variation readout. I would think that it would be really valuable um, to mm-hmm. have this on the range and and try different swings, but, but gripping it at different um, pressures intentionally so that you can that's see right. what it feels like. And then you have a that's gauge right. to go, oh, okay, so that's what it feels like if I'm really squeezing too hard, and that's what that's it is right. if I'm not enough. So you can really get a, a comparison and then take that with you out on the course to say, all right, this is the difference between what it feels like you know, I, I got to relax. I can feel that I'm right. gripping too hard. And, and where the rubber hits the road is whether the ball goes straight. You know, and and if there's a lot of variation in the grip pressure, as Tony was saying, you know, you're going to slice it. And and, and and because that, you know, uh, that bearing down is going to alter the the, the, the the flight of the ball as much as anything. And, and uh, uh, to go on to the range with that nice relaxed grip, you know, again, to quote Hogan, you know, uh, just tight enough to keep that club in your hands, you know, and, uh, uh, and there's a digital number that, uh, you know, depending on the hand strength of the individual user, that's a uh, custom fit, you know, it, uh, if it's, uh, you know, the number that works for you is the one you'll commit to memory and, uh, and, 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 and uh, the device is really, uh, 
its stre- stro- its strength, its strongest selling point is that it's a muscle memory device. Mm, so important. Well, um, mm-hmm. it, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks and, very uh, much, Fred. Oh yeah, and and because uh, you had so much success with Shotwatch. Uh, the first time that we presented it on the Golf Smarter podcast, you, you contacted me again wanting to do it. And so we've talked about this previously, and uh, we've made arrangements for Golf Smarter members uh, to be able to purchase the shot watch at your website at a discounted mm-hmm. price. Um, right. And so uh, normally the price for the shot watch is one ninety nine ninety five. Right. And for Golf Smarter listeners, uh, if you use the checkout code Golf Smarter. You'll be able to pick it up for $180. And for Golf Smarter members, uh, go to the Golf Smarter member blog, and I will give you the coupon code there because you'll be able to get that shot watch discounted from $199.95 to $160, which right. is a, a very generous discount for you to give to our listeners. We appreciate it very much. Well, we're certainly pleased to do so, Fred. So, again, uh, if you're not a Golf Smarter member, this could be a, a great opportunity to take advantage of signing up for that just so you can get the discount, uh, the significant discount here. Again, $180 for normal Golf Smarter listeners with the coupon code Golf Smarter. And for Golf Smarter members, $160. And we'll give you that coupon code on, on the blog. Uh, and uh, if you if you, you didn't find it, email me, and I will send you the coupon code for that. But even more so, we're going to give one away. Actually, we're going to give two away. Again, yeah. um, Ted and I talked about this previously and arranged that we are going to give one away to a Golf Smarter member, and we are going to have a drawing. If you register to enter at golfsmarter.com, uh, deadline for entry is November 5th. And we will announce the winner on November 9th. We will give one away randomly to a Golf Smarter member on the episode of October 19th. But uh, please go to golfsmarter.com, click on contest, and register to win a shot watch. Again, valued at $200, discounted for you, only you. And um, again, Ted. Thank you so much for uh, coming back on the show and bringing Tony along. He's absolutely yes. Well, I want to I, I want to thank you, Fred, and and I also want to thank Tony because his his advice, uh, you know, his all his experience in teaching golf and all the rest of that has has, has helped us in the development of the product enormously. And uh, and uh, you know, so this is a uh, this is a uh, genuinely a team effort, and uh, we're we're delighted to to work together with uh, uh, with Tony and his and his boys out here great and uh can i say goodbye to tony myself yes yes here he is hey fred hey tony thank you so much for coming onto the podcast and uh i best of luck with the with the school and i'm hoping when i come back down to the desert sometime in 2011 that we'll get a chance to meet one another face to face I hope I hope so too, and I hope I didn't give you a in, in kind of a bad ear here with that all that. Oh chatter, no, I loved but... it. I loved it. Okay. And at some point, I'm going to want to be wearing a cap from your team, from Gol- College of the Desert golf team. That's a given. Awesome. <laughs> all right, pal. Thank you, Tony, very much. We'll talk to you Thank again. Thank you. Bye, bye now. <laughs>